So obviously quantum itself is, is vast and expansive in terms of all its capabilities and what it can do. But if you had to narrow it down to a nutshell, what is Quantum 365? Quantum, put simply, is the next generation in asset management tools. You cannot do this job effectively without the data it provides. You just can't. So what we're able to do is, is surface usage information, user tracking, trend information about, I guess, the entire Microsoft Cloud estate that simply isn't available anywhere else. A hundred percent. By getting that user data, we are allowing information to be surfaced to the people that need to make decisions in a way that we've not been able to before. They can make the right technology decisions, the right security decisions, and even the decisions around things that they need to be doing to nurture those employees. It's a new way of doing things, but in my view, this is the way, this is the only way. The, the reality of actually managing a you know, global estate on a day-to-day, on a -day, month by month basis is actually terribly difficult. What we're doing is allowing organisations to have that visibility to say, what part of my business is growing? What part of my business is shrinking? Uh, you know, what part of my business am I temporarily putting on furlough? Or, or you know, where am I seeing a downtick in activity? And, and, and how do I address that with how I'm paying for licensing? Or how do I address that in terms of what I'm subscribing to? Why would I keep paying month in, month out for something that we are either not using at all or we are using a fraction of? Connection of the knowledge that we hold as a business and the data that's provided as part of the quantum platform, um, we're able to help that business evolve properly and to make decisions based on context of the actual requirement for the parts of their business. So it's creating fluidity within a business that wasn't there before, and it's creating accountability in the, uh, the, the means for people that sit at the top to actually drive that business in the correct way. You have X amount of users who have not logged in within 90 days. Clearly some of those may be on maternity leave, long-term sick, furlough, etc. You know, it's, it's an ever-changing situation, but what we were able to show from within the tool was, here is a user who has not logged in from 90 days. You scroll over to the right, you can see what geographic territory in, what business unit they work for, who their line manager is. And, and, and the customer I was talking to said, I can actually get my hands on all of that information from about six different systems and by phoning three different people. But to have that there in one view and then to be able to tag those users and proactively say, you know, this is someone that's on maternity leave, don't tell me that they haven't logged in again for a year because we, you know, that's expected behaviour. Yeah. That alone is worth its weight in gold to me, just to be able to have that, that granular visibility of what those users are doing, where they are, and, and very quickly establish yeah. why, why we're seeing that behaviour. Is it a, you know, an account we can disable? Is it a licence we can reharvest? Or is it someone that we can, we can identify as being absent for a reason? When I told someone the other day it was 15 minutes of his time, he kind of laughed and said, okay, you're embellishing. I was like, honestly, you know, use a stopwatch, log into your Office 365 portal, grant us these permissions, you're done. That, that's, that's how much of your time we need. We then need about 10 days in the background to let the tool run, to let it soak up some usage information, start to notice patterns. But in terms of outlay of time from you, 15 minutes of, of granting permissions, half an hour for us to show you what that feedback looks like 10 days later.